Hi guys, so today I want to come on here and show you how I alter a hard front wig to make it look more realistic. All right, so I wanted to come on here and kind of just show you guys how I take a hard front wig, which if you are new to wigs, the difference between a hard front wig and a lace front wig is literally that. So if you look at a lace front wig, when you get one, it's going to have this lace on it here around the hairline, and that's going to make it look more realistic. It's gonna blend in with your hairline more so that you don't see this harsh line where your hairline should be, and it really blends in. So with a hard front wig, the difference is that you have literally what it says, this hard front, you don't have any lace. And a lot of times, so that they can make it look like a scalp, they put this rubber, flesh-colored rubber here, and that's what the hair is attached to and a lot of times what happens is then they take it and it is folded over and tucked in here so what happens is it has a really hard front hard line right here so it doesn't blend as well so there are a couple things that you can do to soften this hard front up on a wig and that's what I'm gonna show you guys how to do I have a wig here that I've done it with so I'll show you kind of like the end result here so you can see really what we're trying to go for if you look at Everett right here she has already been cut so what we've done here if you look is we have actually gone in unfolded this rubber piece and cut, trimmed it so that it lays flatter and doesn't have such a big hump here and then we've also gone in and we've kind of gone in and plucked this part to make it look wider to make it look more realistic that's what we're gonna do I have two wigs that I'm gonna show you kind of these steps with so one right here we're gonna use her she's a hard front as well and then the one that I was showing earlier that blonde curly one so I can show you kind of the different steps on two different wigs just so you can see kind of what the steps are to do this and it's not hard you are going to be taking some scissors to this wig so keep that in mind this is not something that you can stop once you start you got to finish it so cut at your own risk i will say that but it's not difficult as long as you follow the steps like it really isn't difficult so what you're going to need for this is scissors i recommend to like smaller scissors to get in a little bit closer so i've got like literally eyelash cutting scissors, any type of small hair cutting shears, anything like that, it works too. And then you're gonna want some tweezers, flat tweezers preferably with a flat end because you're gonna use these to pluck your parts. These are the three things that you need to do this. So nothing crazy, most of the stuff you should already have around your house anyway. So the first thing you wanna do is take your wig and we're gonna turn her, oh, I lied. I've gone so crazy on cutting these that I've actually already done this one. Whichever scissors you feel most comfortable with, I'm gonna go in with smaller scissors to do this part. And you want to, this is where the scissors come in right away, I know it's scary, but you want to go in here, and most of these wigs have this lace like material on here. So you're gonna have to, right here where you see the seam, so you see the seam here and then you see the lace, you wanna cut right there along that line. So we're disconnecting this lace here and essentially like making a pocket, if that makes sense. All right, so I'm just going in here and I'm just opening this up. It's the only thing with these little tiny baby scissors is they're not as sharp. So a lot of times I just like to get it started and then I grab my bigger scissors once I'm in there. And there might be a couple layers and that's fine. You wanna cut through those layers. So you really wanna try to just cut that lace layer off. If you get lower, you might expose the hairs, which is what I just did. And I'm gonna fix that, it's fine. But you just wanna try to just get that top lace layer off. And it's really just so you can get to this part. Some of these have hairs sticking into them and some don't. Now we're gonna go ahead and right here on the end, we wanna disconnect and detach this end of the seam right here. And this is where it gets scary. I'm sorry guys, if you're scared, but you literally wanna like poke it through to get it off of there so that it's literally un unfolded. So now see how we've unfolded the seam. This is the rubber piece that they've folded over and sewn onto this wig. So you wanna do it on the other side as well. And you can just poke through because it is just the rubber. So now we've unfolded this wig, but this is the unfolded part. So this is what we're gonna be cutting off. So now if you flip this wig over, you now have this sticking out, which obviously you don't want this on your forehead because that would just look terrible. So we're gonna be cutting this off and you can just follow the hemline here. And you are gonna lose a little bit of hair when you do this and that's totally fine. We're gonna go in and we're gonna pluck after we do this. So don't be freaked out if you cut off a good amount of hair because we're gonna lose any of this hair that has been sewn into the hem, that like that hem. So it's okay. Um, this is where it's like you have to trust the process and it's a little scary, but the first time I did it, I freaked out a little bit. 
and I did it on a nice wig too, which was probably not the smartest. I like I should have started with like this wig. So like, look, we're gonna lose all this hair. Like this is all gonna come off. So don't freak out. It's totally fine. Like I was literally panicking when I did this. I was like, oh no, I did this wrong. And then I'm like, oh no, wait, it makes sense. Like there was all this extra hair on here. So you just wanna brush that off and get it out of there. We're gonna brush through this wig when we're done. So if you don't get it all, it's fine. But you just wanna take it off so you can really see like what you're working with. And you just wanted to try to make that as straight as possible. So that's what we did here. So now we can put the scissors down. And so now we have this much flatter. So it's gonna sit on our head a lot flatter here and we can blend in our makeup a lot more with this as well. And now we're just going to take our tweezers. We're gonna make this part wider to make it look more realistic. And we're gonna pluck a little bit right here just to make this not such a harsh line anymore. Cause we do have this rubber flesh to work with that is gonna look like skin. So that works in our favor. We are going to grab the tweezers here. And I always recommend getting some type of tweezers that have a flat end here. They don't even have to have a point on them at all. Um, with this, it's not as serious because there isn't any lace for us to accidentally stab, but whenever you're plucking a lace wig, you can see I have videos where I'm plucking lace wigs and I always like say, be careful with the point because you don't want to stab a hole in your wig. Um, with this, it's not as serious, but I just always try to use ones that have a flat because you can get really close to this. And we're literally now just gonna go in and we're gonna widen this on both sides. It's okay to take a decent amount of hair out of here. It's okay to mess this part up a little bit. It doesn't have to be completely straight. It doesn't have to have the same amount of hair plucked out of it in every like space. That's what kind of makes it look more natural. And then I always kind of go in right here at the front and widen it some more because I always like to have like that little triangle. And like I said, you don't have to be as careful with these as you do with the lace. So you can pull more hairs at a time. Just be careful because like I always say, you can not put the hair back. So you can always pluck more. You can never put it back on there. So just be careful when you're plucking. And we're gonna bring this part back further because we do have some more part space that we can work with that they didn't use. And the further back you can bring this part, the more realistic it's gonna look as well because we all don't have our part stop an inch away from our foreheads. The one nice thing about this too, is if you can really get this to look nice and real, it almost sometimes will look more real than some lace wigs will because there isn't those lace knots that you see because it's not transparent. It's actually like a rubber material, which is kind of interesting. So some of these, when they have a really good rubber on them, especially like if they really match your skin tone, they can look pretty awesome. So if you get a Sharpie that's similar to your skin tone and you can buy um, a Sharpie marker and go over the part here to make the scalp match. And then we're just gonna go right here along this edge that we cut and just make sure that we get rid of these hairs that are folded over because that's gonna look weird when we put that wig on if there's like hair sticking straight out. So we're just going in and we're just plucking this you don't want to do too much, like I said, so just kind of every other couple hairs. And really focus on getting the hairs that is on the edge part. You want to make sure you've got that off there. So now that this looks like a hot mess, we're going to brush this out so you guys can really see what it looks like. All right, so total in all, this is the hair that we have removed from this wig. And this is our final product here. So you can see... We have this nice line here now. It lies much, much, much flatter on our head. We have this broke up here and we have a nice deep part. So I'm gonna throw her on so you can see what she looks like on. All right, so this is it. And as you can see, and I should have done it before so you could really tell, but if you look in here and you zoom in on this hairline, I mean, super close up, you can see it. And there's some more bronzing and blending we could do to make this a little bit better. But overall, and I have this one straight here, here. Overall, like huge, huge difference. Like I wasn't wearing her anymore because as I've gotten nicer wigs and nicer hairlines and have more of those really nice lace front hairlines and I've gotten really good at plucking those, I kind of had this one sitting in a drawer and hadn't been wearing her, but I actually don't have a curly wig this length and I'm, I'm not mad at it. She doesn't have a name though, so we have to name her because all my wigs have names. This one needs a name. This one needs a name too. So let me know what you guys think. She makes me feel like a lion. So back to where we were. This is literally it. This is all you have to do. 
It's not hard. Like I said, it's just getting over the fear of taking scissors to your wig and like there's no turning back. So I hope this helps. You can apply this to any hard front wig that you have that has this rubber um, situation going on and it will solve any problems where you have like a weird little bump on that hard front. So let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. If there's any other wig ideas that you guys want to see, let me know. I love making videos that you guys are actually asking for because those are the videos that I would want to see. If you are new to my channel, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Give me a like on this video, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that little notification bell so you guys get notifications for any videos I do in the future. And uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next video.